Well, hello, Crime Stoppers. Oh, it's hot to make these videos, I tell you. <laughs> Just, uh, I've done numerous takes and I go on for like 25 minutes. I'm like, nobody wants to listen to me for 25 minutes. And I try to shorten it down and then I don't remember to say everything I want to say. And then I go on for 20. Uh, anyway. Uh, and I'm a couple of days of trying to make a video because there's so much going on and I get disturbed and so on. But um, Happy New Year, first off. And uh, Sandy Hook, Sandy Hook, they're still bobbling the Sandy Hook thing out there. Gun control. Actually, they've moved slightly away from Sandy Hook now and the dead bodies. And now it's gun control, gun control, gun control. What's the main thing? The main thing is not gun control. The main thing is not... The main thing is the dollar is going to collapse. The main thing is the Federal Reserve. The, the main thing is dollar hegemony. The main thing is everybody uses money, right? And all of us use money. Not all of us are gay. Not all of us need birth control. Not all of us have kids that are in school. Not all of us carry guns. Not all of us, right? But everybody uses money. And they don't want you talking about that. If we spent 10% of the time that we spent talking about Sandy Hook and gun control on the media and in the papers and everything, we spent 10% of the words as we did talking about what they did in Iceland. And we knew the names of the players and the details of what they did in Iceland and the names of the people that decided that they'd had enough, not of guns and children getting killed, but they'd had enough of the bankers enslaving them with debt. And they'd had enough of the, of the government being in cahoots with these bankers. And anyway, that would be, see, they don't want any of that. And, and do, you, do you understand? Do you know the Iceland story? If you don't know the Iceland story, you should figure out the Iceland story and find out more about that. It was basically they pulled their government out of office and re rewrote their constitution and re you know reelected their government, put the bankers in jail, and now they're on fine footing. And here in the United States, none of that, right? Down in Ecuador, this guy talks about putting a slight tax on the bankers, and the CIA is talking about killing them. Um, and don't think our CIA hasn't been down in the, in the Latin America. I mean, when I traveled in Latin America, I told them that I was from Hawaii. And most of them didn't put two and two together that Hawaii was part of the United States. Because they do not like the, the, the gringo Yankee, the, you know, Americans down there. Because we've done atrocious things here in our part of the hemisphere. And everywhere else on the planet. Our, we don't, our government doesn't represent us. We, our government represents the special interest corporations, and those corporations do evil things all the time, and you guys just let them get away with it. And they keep you distracted and entertained with sports and whatever the hell else it is, and now whatever stories they can sensationalize about gun control and this and that, because as, man, as long as you don't focus on the main thing, you need to educate other people on what's going on, on sound money on the, the fact that the currency is about to collapse and one of the main reasons they're talking about this whole gun control thing is not about the kids and not about all, it's because they understand that when things go awry and they're gonna go far awry because these things always end very, very badly, always in the history of the world, no fiat currency has survived, never, not one. You guys need to understand that when this thing falls down, there's going to be some social unrest. And when there's some social unrest, that's going to be the best time to put policies in and dare crony and, and be able to, you know, do the old bait and switch and switcheroo and do all kinds of things that you never thought would happen in the United States. And how are you going to stop that? And how are you going to quell the violence? And how are you going to stop the tyranny? With guns. I hate to say it. And see, this is the thing. Our founding fathers understood this. Power to the people. The power of the people... You are not are you are not powerful if you are not armed. You I mean this changed everything. Having the people be able to have arms changed everything. The reason why we have a president and not a queen ruling over us is because we have arms. It's always been the case, and sad to say, humanity has not risen far enough where we can get rid of the guns quite yet. Um the, and the whole thing, like, just take seatbelts, for example, okay? And this is why the, the, the Second Amendment people sound like such fanatics to the other side, because they understand the co concept of the camel's nose in the tent. With seatbelts, and here's, and it's about money, but before we even get into that story, it's all about, if they figured out that they could make more money uh, with you not wearing a seatbelt, there'd be laws against you wearing your seatbelt. Do you understand that? They don't give a fuck about you. They don't care about your safety. If they figured out that, that uh, you died outright and they didn't have to pay the death claims because you weren't wearing your seatbelt, then somehow they save money statistically, even if it was just a few bucks, there'd be all kinds of laws against you wearing a seatbelt. Okay, so now the way they, they figured out, though, is that actually seatbelts do, in fact, save lives. So, and because it saves lives and it saves injury and small injuries, it actually saved the insurance companies money. There's the bottom line. It saved them money. So now they started off with, oh, maybe you should wear your seatbelt. And then they went 
well, we won't tag you if you're not wearing your seatbelt, but if you're not wearing your seatbelt, you should have been, and we're going to write you up a ticket if we tag you for something else, or if you get in an accident, that's going to be an additional thing we put in there, right? The penalty for you. Oh, and now uh, they got it to the point where if you're not wearing your seatbelt, we can tag you. They're just for not wearing your seatbelt. Just for driving along in your car, <laughs> you're not wearing a seatbelt, they can pull you over. And they can search your car, and then they can hopefully tag some other things on there. They're not protecting you. They're raising revenue. Don't get in there, and they're protecting. They're raising revenue for corporations. It's the bottom line. Well, it's the same thing with guns. They can't. It's the Second Amendment is in the way, and they'd have to get rid of the Second Amendment to ban guns outright. But they want to infringe on your rights to bear arms, and they. And there is many, many fold reasons for them wanting to do this. I'm telling you, economic collapse is one of the main ones. And that's not one. It's not about school shootings. It's not about kids. But even then, it boils down to the fact that. Cars kill way more people than guns do in this country. All the doctors kill more than that, even. Let's not go there, but let's do go there via the route of drugs. So what we want is we don't want drugged up people and drunk drivers on the road driving cars because you inadvertently kill people or maybe you do have some suicidal tendencies and you wind up killing yourself and killing others. Okay, it's the same thing with guns. You don't want people on drugs. Uh, and you can, I've got a link down there. Nobody's talking about this. They keep that dialogue off the mainstream media as much as possible. They don't talk about mental health care. They don't talk about drugs being a problem. Prescription drugs, I'm not talking about pot or cocaine. I'm talking about prescription drugs and the side effect we see for some of these antidepressants and, you know, behavior stabilizing drugs, supposedly, is this, this it's amazing, but true, the side effects are suicidal thoughts and violent behavior. The very things that these things are supposed to treat. The thing is supposed to make you, these are supposed to be happy pills. And what they wind up doing when you're coming off your happy pills is you get suicidal and violent. And then if you have a gun in your hand while you're suicidal and violent, of course bad things happen. Or if you're behind the car, behind the wheel of a car too. But the idea is we need to start talking about the drug is, and drug control as much as we need to start talking about gun control. But even then, it's a side issue when it's compared to the Federal Reserve and the fact that the currency is going to collapse. The fiat currency, there is no fiat currency in the history of the world that hasn't ever, ever, ever in the history of the world. It's always collapsed. Always. They always do exactly what they're doing now, which is QE, which is diluting the currency, which they call it QE, quantitative easing, but basically they're debasing the currency and making each dollar work less until finally the dollar becomes worthless. And when that happens, you want to talk about social unrest, there's going to be some pretty serious social unrest, I'm telling you. And, and what you'll want, I guarantee you, when there's a lot of social unrest is the ability to protect you and yours. And the mob psychology and the crowd psychology, we've seen it happen. We've seen pictures of this already. I have pictures in my mind of these guys defending their stores with automatic weapons, shooting into crowds of people because the looters were in mobs, right? You don't want six shots. You don't want five shots. You want to be able to shoot and not have to reload that. Anyway, and further, the idea is not about you know self-defense and hunting and recreational activities. The idea is us against them, and if they have uh, large capacity caliber weapons that are automatic, ours are only semi-automatic, theirs are automatic, uh, our ability to resist tyranny with these, right? The armed populace, and this is again, they want you afraid. They want you afraid of guys that look like me. They want me afraid of guys that are white and have no hair on their head who just happen to maybe shave their head because that's the style. They're not skinheads, right? They're just guys with no hair, They're, right? I'm not some crazy Rastafarian, you know, like you'd never know that I'm actually pretty good at mathematics and I've been involved in education for quite a while looking at me. And see, they want you afraid. They want you afraid of your countrymen because if you're afraid of your countrymen, uh, that way you don't rise up against them, right? That way if we're all doing that, uh, right, right? but here's what we know. In, in armed societies are polite societies, and overall in the countryside, in the small towns around this country, in towns of, you know, 100,000 or you know, 150, 160, 70, 80,000 or less, there's not a lot of gun violence. In, uh, and there's not a lot of, you know, violent crime, there's not a lot, right? These armed societies are polite societies, people get along, your countrymen are good people. Your, the country, your countrymen that move into the military or you know serve, they're in there to serve. They have altruistic notions about you know duty and honor and country and so forth. And then they get perverted by these guys and the corporations and our governments, and they wind up doing things that they you know that they may not be so proud of. 
But the idea is your countrymen, overall, we're good people. More people with guns will do, will, it's just statistically, just logic and reasoning says that more good guys with guns will stop bad guys with guns. And the percentage of bad guys is small. The percentage of people that are evil and that want to rape and murder and, and thieve from people and that don't want to, you know, just raise their kids and, and get along are small. Even if it was huge, even if it was like a, a tremendous number, like 20%. The other 80% could stop that 20% easily if it's armed. It's, it's just logic and common sense. And the other 80%, like I said, if 90 to 95% is probably what it is out there of your friends and neighbors are sane, you know, God-fearing, kind individuals that would help you if you get a flat tire or if you're on the side of the, you know, more than, you know, they see a woman on the side of the road, they'd stop and help more than try and kill them or rape them or steal from them. But it's just, you know, a numbers game. Statistically speaking, uh, too many people stop by and do nothing. And, and that one person may or, or may not wind up uh, finding a victim on the side of the road. But if you're armed, you can defend yourself. If you, that person isn't armed and another person happens by that is, again, it's just a numbers game. But again, this guy is down there shows the, the numbers. And I'm see, I spend all this time talking about guns and gun when the main What's the main thing? The main thing is the FRN. The main thing is compete sound money. The main thing is the fact that our government and and corporations are now in cahoots and they're enslaving you with debt. And we're going around the world trying to enslave other countries with debt. And anybody that messes with them with that, it, they you know they'll do everything they can to keep that from happening. So uh, this whole story, what we had going on there? Oh, it was chemical weapons and weapons of mass destruction. And oh my God! And then suddenly it was silent. What happened? Well, what happened is the Russians actually said, we're not going to stand for another Libya. And whew, everything went quiet. Oh, Sandy Hook, Sandy Hook. Oh, oh gun control. Right? They get, I mean, right? they just keep you distracted, keep you afraid, keep you afraid of each other. What we need to do is educate each other and understand that the liberty movement and the volunteerism, it's the new thought. It's not, it's, it, you know, the new thought as in about a couple of hundred years old, not the old thought of the tyrants and monopolies and the corporations and governments making money for themselves. Look, it's just the same thing as us sending foreign aid to other countries where we, we with all good intentions, we want to give these people food. Where does the food end up in? It ends up in the hands of the dictators and their cronies, right? Very little of the food trickles down to the people that actually need it. We find that, you know, we give millions of dollars in foreign aid and these guys become millionaires. They sell the, they sell the food. They do it. Anyway, it doesn't get, the bottom line is it doesn't get to where we want it to go. Well, it's the same thing in the United States, except it's not, uh, and they, actually even when they want it to, uh, it's money. It's not food. It's money. And they're trying to get money into the hands of uh, the people, but they're having a different, that's called velocity and, and a few other uh, factors that we talk about. But it's not getting into the hands of the people. It's getting into the hands of the bankers, and the bankers are not lending it again. They're they're saving it. They're well, they're not saving it. They're hoarding it. There's a slight difference. And the the idea is that we could billions and billions and trillions now of dollars being printed, and it's not getting into the hands of the average everyday people. It's being lifted out of the hands of the average everyday people via debt and other enslavement tactics that they purposefully are putting upon you, and. The middle class is getting wiped out. There's more poverty. There's more people on food stamps. They love it when you're on food stamps. They love you dependent. They do not want you independent. They don't want you independent with a gun, <coughs> your own energy source, and your own food. They don't want that. <coughs> I'm choking myself. Anyway, the, the I mean, just the thought of it. Uh, imagine a government that did want that, that they wanted you free, they wanted you independent, they wanted you f with lots of free time in order to, you know, govern yourselves, they, in order to, you know, elect the best people possible to the office of, of uh, whatever it is, president on down, and that we would go around, you know, setting an example for the rest of the world to emulate instead of, you know, going around by gu doing humanitarian stuff at gunpoint. <laughs> We're the humanitarians. We're spreading democracy. And guys like Ron Paul saying, how about if we set the example? How about if we uh, made a utopian society here at home or a more utopian society? How about if we had you know, better health care that was voluntary like it used to be in this country? Um, well, how about if we had uh, you know, fewer homeless people? How about if we had uh, a, a thriving, huge middle class? What if we had prosperity? What if we had freedom? What if we had liberty? What if we had all these things? And then other countries would look at our country and go, wow, they've got it pretty good over there. 
Turns out, you know, Libya had it pretty much better than I mean, the average Libyan did was doing okay until we showed up, even under Gaddafi. And in the average American, you think you're free, you ain't free. You think <laughs> they got you enslaved in so many ways, it's ridiculous to the point that you're so enslaved that you think you're free. That's the that's the amazing and sad thing. Anyhow, get out there and inform your countrymen about the real issues and the real issues of the fact that we've got currency collapse and war coming our way and all this other stuff. It, 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 you're correct. We need to have weapons in order to defend ourselves. But I'm telling you, there's bigger things going on and we need to get people educated about the, the main thing, the bottom line, which is money and the way that works, energy and the way that works, the control of food and the way that works. Right? Liberty and being self-sustaining and independent people. This is what my country was founded on. This is what my, I, I was always raised that this is the way things should be. And we have strayed so far away from that. And our constitution was the framework to allow all that to happen. And we were doing pretty well there for a couple hundred years. And now we're starting to just go off in a direction that most Americans can't even recognize what's happened to our country now. I mean, like even my grandmother, as a, as a young woman, if you woke her up and trans rumple still skinned her into today, and she looked around, she would just, I I can't imagine what she'd have to say. Same thing w with a lot of different people from the past that they would not even recognize this country. What's going on right now? And we need. It's not that we need to go back to, in time. It's need that we, we need to return to principles. Taking the country back, these people try to construe it as, oh, we want to go backwards. We want to go back fifty years to you know. It's segregation and all of what no what we need to do is return to principled leadership return to the constitution return to the rule of law not the rule of men return to the to a place where our government restrains these corporations from creating monopolies and enslaving us this is what we're talking about when we talk about returning right or going right it's not going backwards we need to go forward we need to understand that that it's liberty versus tyranny and tyranny over time, always loses, and it makes them. They make themselves look good and powerful, but they always lose. Fiat currencies always fail. Empires always fall. But in the meantime, the people suffer. The people have pain, and we need to try and get through this same struggle that's over and over again happening. Right? History just keeps repeating, with less pain, with more education, with more people understanding that. We need to do what's just and right and not have just us, but justice and have more education and have more freedom and liberty and have more independence and more free thought and more art and more music and more happiness. But that's the point of this. Now, don't be afraid. Don't be afraid of your countrymen. Don't be afraid of the future, right? Get to work. There's plenty of work to do. There's plenty of stuff. Educate others. Educate yourself. That's probably job one. I'm certainly not done reading every day. I just can't read enough. There's plenty of stuff. Ron Paul's works. There's, I mean, Bastide and, and uh, oh, Voltaire. I mean, just on and on. There's so much to read. Educate yourselves. Educate you know, the, the Austrian economics, misses and so forth. Uh, people that have preached peace understand the stuff that they're talking about when it comes to Gandhi, Martin Luther King, other men that have talked about, you know, peace and prosperity. And it sounds, you know, this is the sad thing. It sounds so hokey dokey, but it's not. We could have a more utopian society. We could have bigger and better things and better technology and so forth, but we've got these imbeciles in control and in control of you. And the way they do it is with money and debt. So educate yourself about that. Anyway, I've gone on too long again, but I've had enough. This is the tape that's going to be. I've got plenty of predictions for, for what's coming up, and I'm going to make a video about predictions. And these are some of them are going to be very sad, but it's not because I'm a prophet. It's because it's very easy to see what comes. And then a year from now, because it's been about a year I've been making videos now, uh, we'll see how many of these predictions come to pass. But the bottom line is be of good cheer, my friends, and educate yourselves and others. And we're going to come through this thing. There's going to be pain, but we're going to come through this thing smelling like roses, I'm telling you. But don't believe them for a second if they tell you that things are, you know, that everything is hunky dory because everything is not hunky dory. And anybody that looks at uh, finance and economy and, you know, and the numbers sees that we got some bad things coming our way. So just prepare. Don't be afraid. Just prepare. All right. 